Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at an interview done by Montreal Rocks of the warning that must have happened towards the end of October, sometime when they were when the warning was in the neighborhood, uh, finishing off their tour. This is a new one, and I thought it would be worth taking a look to see uh, what has changed in the last few months. I mean, of course, things are changing all the time. Now they've just finished a North American tour for the most part. So I was uh, really curious to just catch up with them and see if there was any new information they were imparting on this one. It says, Montreal Rocks brings you interviews, concert reviews, videos, and photos from gigs throughout Montreal and beyond. Okay, so with that in mind, why don't we go ahead and take a look at this. So I'd like to welcome these really cool, talented women to Montreal Rocks. And they're opening up for Evanescence. It's The Warning. Yay, hey everyone! Hello! Is, this is not the biggest uh, stadium you've ever played in, is it, or arena? Uh, I don't think so, no. Uh, I think the biggest one that we've played for was 70,000 people wow. with Muse in Lyon. Muse. France. Yeah, you were yeah. touring with Muse. Yes. Did that, that feel weird. surreal to you? It, it was so, very surreal. Yeah. Do you ever get intimidated or are you so used to it now? Because I don't think I would use the word intimidated, but more than likely like impressed or just like overwhelmed with how, yeah, shocked with how mm. much talent and amazing music people can make it's just amazing we love having lived through all these experiences wow yeah but you you all three have been playing music since very very young like childhood right yeah so um <laughs> it all started when we were very very young um we all started playing the piano yes but it was I'm, I'm sorry. i started laughing only because it seems pretty clear that ali is the one now that gives the early backstory the stuff that they've talked about Many, many times over. They're growing up time. So that's why I had to laugh a little bit when Danny just went, whoop, here you go, Allie. <laughs> Until our parents bought us a video game, the rock band. So we always lived in a very musical environment. Our parents are not musicians, but they love music. So okay. we would always hear music around the house. Our like family time would be like watching DVDs of of concerts, like Queen concerts, wow. Elton John concerts, um, maybe like Pink Floyd concerts. Okay. But... It wasn't until they bought us a video game with a rock band that we really loved what we saw on that screen. You know, yeah. Danny and Powell played all the time. I was very young, so I just, like, watched them play. But that's what mainly inspired us to mm. do what we do today. Danny, after that, grabbed the guitar, then Powell the drums. I eventually picked up the bass. Yeah. And it wasn't until I picked up the bass that we were like, oh, we can play together. So we did a cover of Goggy Rock and Roll to You, the version by Kiss. And after that, that's... Yeah. You know, the rest we kept is on history. writing music, and <laughs> yeah, and ten years later, we're wow. we're here. Yeah, ten years—that's crazy. Yeah, I took piano up too. So you all started off with piano. Yeah, and like this has been your whole life for so long. Like, did, you didn't? Did you finish school? Did you, or you did, were you homeschooled? Or there was one point that we had to like kind of balance school with what mm. you know, recording an album. Right. Uh, but we did finish high school. Yeah, yeah, we finished until high school. Okay. And again, we were very flexible with school because we were like having shows, playing festivals, recording albums, doing interviews, traveling, and it was like, I, I have a math exam next Monday. Wow, okay. I <laughs> but I mean, we managed to get through it. Well. I can imagine you have a crazy schedule because you're touring and then putting out albums and then touring and putting it like, is there any downtime at and all? And so on. Um, I feel like no? not really, but <laughs> you have to, it's more of like a mentality, you know, mm. like you have to let yourself maybe for an hour not concentrate on anything that is mm. work related and you get like these little like tiny time lapses, but no, we're mostly on all the time. I was like, I listen to your music and I've seen you, you perform. You did uh, last, uh, not this August, the August before, as I said, at Le Studio TD mm -hmm. with the Errors tour. And uh, your music is like so intense. It's like so hard. So how do you like relax though? <laughs> do you um, relax ever? I, I think we're good. At, <laughs> well, I don't know how good we are at relaxing, <laughs> but um, I think that people, since they see us play, mm. they think we listen to the type of music all the time, uh, that we live okay. in that all the time, yeah. and we don't. We don't. Uh, at least we try not to, because okay. it can be very overwhelming. But, but <laughs> yeah, so we try to relax as best as we can. Well, do you, like, what do you do to relax, though? Like, how do you unwind after a show or a tour or whatever? Like, 
What are your happy places? Is there a place you go and you're like, okay, I just want to go. Like, I'll give you an example. I just, do you know who Kate Nash is? I just saw her. She was performing here recently. And on her Instagram, during, in between her tour, she'll go to like an animal shelter and like, Oh, like play with puppies and stuff. It's just it was so that's cute. So nice. Yeah, I, w- I saw that, and it's like she's touring on a bus all yeah. around North America. So I was like, wow, like who would have thought of that? Yeah, I wouldn't have thought of that. It's like reconnecting with nature. So I get yeah. it. Yeah. But <laughs> what do we do to relax? Lo-fi music. Yes. <laughs> I like to watch people play video games. Really? Yeah, with no commentary, just like them playing. Okay. Fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. Like cooking videos. Kick, cooking videos. Oh, cooking people videos. People making. Like ASMR cake videos? Oh, yes. Great. Yes. Okay, at night if I can't sleep, I'll put on Martha Stewart Bakes. But she has to be making pastry. Okay. Nothing yeah. heavy, like something fluffy and soft and light. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. ASMR. Yeah, because yeah, your music is super intense. And do people just think you're like angry all the time? <laughs> um, I don't know if angry, but they, they do meet us and they say one or two things uh. like you're smaller than we thought uh. you were because <laughs> we're short and you're like, you're like sweet. Like, like they see the opposite of what they see on stage mm. when they meet us like at meet and greets and right. stuff. And you're like, well, <laughs> do you have to get into a headspace? Like, do you have a ritual before you get on stage, especially today? So you're opening for Evanescence. Mm. And you're in a big arena and it's, it's going to be, well, you're used to it, but do you have to, how do you prepare for that? I, I don't, I don't think yeah, that we no. do this. Whole, I think oh. that we've been doing it for so long okay, it's normal. that it's just a really automatic wow. switch that just turns on. But I mean, we, for this tour, we've been kind of bougie. We brought a trainer with us and we've been um, training before, wow. like we've been warming up and like pumping it up before the shows and then we cool down after the show which I feel like it's I don't think people think about that but that is the best thing that has ever happened to us we cool like we stretch and then we meditate okay that that has helped us a lot that's it oh my gosh what a great idea and what a good habit to have when you're on tour (laughs) to have a trainer I mean this is this is so much healthier than the the classic rock realm of what what people may come to expect before and after a gig. Thankfully, I think this is a much better place to be. Uh, it puts you in a better headspace for the show. You can probably get to sleep a lot faster. For those of you that haven't played shows, especially if they go on for more than an hour, I mean, if you're really getting into it and working up the crowd, I mean, you come off the stage and you might be tired, but you're not gonna go to sleep for a long time. I mean, we're talking four or five hours is not unusual for a wind down. So if you stop at, oh, let's say 11 or midnight or something, I mean, it could take hours to actually fall asleep. But if you do what they just said, I could see where that would help a lot. Okay, a couple of little things about the, uh, the interview itself. I don't know, I'm glad, I mean, it's good that they're getting press I think that the interviewer doesn't sound as prepared as I would like her to be. Like, she's got some preparation, but she seems to be doing a lot of winging that doesn't really, I mean, it's coming off a little awkward. (laughs) But yeah, this is like the most subdued interview I've seen in a long time. It could be because the warning themselves are kind of tired, because it's almost the end of the tour by this time. It could be potentially the, uh, the interviewer is still learning to interview. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't want to insult anybody. That's not my intention. But I feel like this could be tightened up quite a bit and that a little extra preparation could have led to better questions. Seems like a lot of these questions are a little bit lightweight. So, okay, I've just made enemies. But <laughs> just, let's keep going because I don't, I don't want to discourage anybody. I, you know, let's just keep going and see where it takes us. Important. Yeah. Yes. It's been good. You see a lot of uh, musicians burning out, having injuries, you know. Yeah. So you stay in shape. Yes, we try to. It's not bougie. I, I, <laughs> you know, okay. I, I feel like it is no, because, well, I mean, we have to bring more people on tour and like sometimes... Well, I feel like it, well, we've been doing it for so long Mm. and it's always been like, ooh, like when we have our own like big tours, we can bring a trainer. But this isn't like our big tour, we're supporting and now we have a trainer with us and it's like, (gasps) I I feel like like, (laughs) imposter syndrome, like I should not be having a trainer with me. But I'm glad we do because it's been a game changer. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's going to ensure your longevity. If you're in shape, you can keep doing it. And, you know, I've seen a lot of videos where you have a lot of musicians in in backstage after a show, they're getting massages and they have a physio and an osteopath and, you know, all that. That's the dream. Yeah. Because I see like Lady Um, Gaga doing that. It's like, I'm not Lady Gaga. (laughs) No, but hold up. But she had health issues. So you're doing, Mm. this is preventative. Yeah, you're right. It's responsible. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. You're not bougie. Well, speaking of longevity, you're obviously still very... I would, I would hold out for the acupuncturist. I'm just saying, you know, if I'm going to be bougie, we're bringing those needles with us. Very, very young, but do you see yourselves doing this until like your 60s and 70s? Like I just saw Stevie yes. Nicks on SNL. Yes, we do. You see her? <laughs> and people are like giving negative comments online because oh, she's, oh, well, in her 70s, which is, she's in her 70s, you know? Yeah. And number one is, do you do you look at comments online or do you just avoid that stuff? Because it could be... I avoid it. Yeah. I mean, if people are criticizing yeah. Stevie Nicks I know. at her 70s, like that's, yeah. that's insane to me. Yeah. I mean, no. But we, we try not to look at comments because people will just attack you for anything. For anything. And, anything. and also, even if the comments are nice, it, it just can be like really... It can take you out of it. It can be a mm. lot. So we try not to. Right. And about the longe- longevity thing. Yeah. I feel like we do see ourselves doing this as long as we possibly can. Maybe not at the pace in which we do it now. Because I, I don't think at 70, I would be able to do like six shows a week. I think we would not be able to handle <laughs> that. But I think yeah. it would be really cool that if we could like tour and make music at our own pace with our own time, I feel like that would be really special for sure. I for hope so, sure. because you have, I mean, you just keep, you know, evolving and growing and learning. And, and this last album, you worked with different people. I, I saw that, yeah. right? Yeah. So you learned from different artists, musicians. Uh, how was that? Yeah, we let ourselves, uh, led someone else into our creative process. Because, yeah. you know, as sisters as well, it was just like... Like a you know, th- yeah, yeah, for sure. It was our sp- safe space. It still mm-hmm. is, um, and inviting someone else who we don't necessarily know at that right. moment yeah. could be jarring because you have to be very vulnerable and just right. open to safe you know, space. right? Of yeah. course, uh, mm-hmm. but we loved it. We loved it, uh, and music is about you know connecting with people. Right. So finding connections with a complete stranger who knows music as well. To write the song, imagine what it can do to someone who listens to it as well. It's yeah. just like a new way that we found of making right. music that we loved. Yeah, because you three, obviously, you trust each other because you're sisters. Yeah. And I find that so cool. They say family members work, well, when you're blood relatives mm. as musicians, you can sort of, you, it's the best combination. It could be the best or the worst. Mm-hmm. Well, because you you have the same DNA and you grew up together. You can read each other. Like, you don't even have to speak. Like, when you're performing, I'm sure sure you can just get those instincts, like, (laughs) off of each other and vibe, right? Like, unless you're... You've known each other that well, it's not going to happen. So I think that's really magical in itself. And also, you're all three, like, so different from each other. We are so different. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just the hair color. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, who's the funniest one? <gasps> oh, okay. That was not expected. Because uh, I, I want them to say me, but they're not no. going to say me. Oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't oh. Consider I, I consider myself the funniest okay. one, but I don't know if it's too cocky for no, me to say I that. Say that. Like, I you, know, yeah. I'm not funny. I know I'm not a funny person. So. Yeah. No. Let's say Poe. You're, you're, you're like dad humor. Yeah, oh so no! Like, dad yeah, humor. No. Like specific moments where it's dad humor. You can you can notice that I'm I want to be funny, you know, but I'm not like. Yeah, sometimes fun. you are. Like, sometimes yeah, I am. You're not unfunny. Uh, you're <laughs> okay. <good. laughs> okay. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, Danny, you bring joy <laughs> just by being you and being honest, and often that is pretty funny. Actually, you can be hilarious. Um, Pao's pretty funny, too. L.A., okay, okay. I actually find it amusing that you would say, yeah, I'm definitely not funny at all. You know, uh, <laughs> at, least you, at least you've got comic timing, I think. I'm not even going to get into that because, I, I mean, 
I feel like we're way out on a limb here somewhere, and I'm not sure that there's much out here on this limb, and I want to go back and see if we get some more. Let's got some good questions going here. What do you say? <laughs> no, no one else. I don't know how to respond to that one. You're the middle sister, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm a middle sister. So we're, we're funny. Yeah, exactly. We just are. <laughs> we're the rebels. Yeah, we, we are. Yeah. So the, the Very big, stereotypical. Yeah. And you're the youngest. I am. Yeah. I remember... <laughs> Come on, let's get a question about this. I know, like, you chose bass, you chose drums, you chose guitar, but who, who does the, the lyrics? Like, who writes lyrics? Um, we all have input on the lyrics, but usually they come out of Pau's brain. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, it's a really big, like, teamwork mm. for, for things to come out the way that they do. Okay. Usually I do have a lot of like lyrics done okay. but it isn't until like the three of us work on it together where it like okay. really takes shape and right. like stays like that yeah yeah because are you when you're writing are you thinking as a drummer because you know like a riff has to mm. come in and a bass line yeah. so are you writing it as a drummer or I don't must, think I think no? learning the piano when I was yeah. young really like set everything up yes. for me to be a songwriter because okay. don't get me wrong Sometimes I do think in a drummer way, but most of the time I write on the piano. So okay. it's like, it's born out of there more than okay. on the drums. Cool. So now you're touring with Evanescence. How long is this tour going on for? I think it's like three weeks. Oh, okay. Or is that a lot? Yeah. End. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, yeah, we're at the end of it. It's, we're like four shows left, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you prefer big venues or because when I had seen you guys, it was at uh, it was a smaller venue, but you mm -hmm. were you were headliner. Yeah. So how, what's the difference between headlining and being supporting act? Like, how do you feel about that? The green rooms. <laughs> yeah. You have More, a bigger green snacks, room. You snacks. have uh, better showers most uh, of the time. Okay. Which okay. is a big oh, yeah. part of touring. Yeah. People don't think about that, but it makes a difference. Okay. Um, but. I think there's something very different about opening shows for people because you have to like, first of all, you have to set the like the night because you are uh, the first thing that people are going to see. You right. need to bring that energy yeah. you need to get people pumped up right. for the headliner. But also it is like our goal as a band to make people like us and yeah. like, hey, necessarily know us. yeah, exactly. Mm. So listen to us and like we need to have like an impact of some sort. Mm. So it's, it's a different mentality because when you're doing a headline, you know that people know your songs. Like, people bought the tickets to go there. Like, they're your fans. Yeah. So it's just, like, about bringing them happiness at that moment. Okay. And when you're doing opening shows, it's like, you have to convince people to listen to you after the show. And that's how it happens yeah, in my head. No, but it is. It, it yeah. does happen that way. Because, like, people don't know you when you're, like, or most of these people, like, most of the people that are going to see us tonight don't know us. I mean, some of them maybe bought tickets to see us, but most of them didn't. So it is mm. an important part to, like, try and make people like you and like your music mm -hmm. after they leave the venue. They're like, oh. Or, like, maybe they're like, oh, I'm going to buy their merch. Or maybe, like, I'm going to go listen to their music. Mm. And then they check, like, oh, when are they coming to Canada again? You know, like, stuff like that. So it's... It really is an important goal when we open for artists. Okay. I really love the groundedness of her answer and just the uh, the humility. I'm surprised people don't know you yet. You want to... You, you, I... Yeah, let's talk about that for a moment here. Uh, I think that a lot of the people that saw this band probably were impressed. I haven't met a lot of people that weren't that impressed with the band. There's been a few that have been like... Eh, not really my cup of tea or with this or the other thing. And I just remember when I first heard Led Zeppelin, I was not impressed at all. And I think I was listening to Zeppelin too. And I was just like, what is this? You know, so <laughs> it all really depends on on context, on context where you are in your mu musical journey, um, what other types of music that you like or maybe have been exposed to, any of that stuff. Um, but it does feel like the interview is being conducted and, and kind of not really having a lot of information about the band. I mean, they did a general Google and, you know, a somewhat of a dive there, but it seems very surface. And I don't think that they have any idea just how amazing this band is. <laughs> I don't mean to say that just to pump them up, but one of the reasons we feature them so much is because I, we consider them extraordinary on the music scene today. You know, like they are unusually good 
You know, there are some other bands like that, but but not a lot. You know, they're within a handful of really amazing bands out there today, and really, I think uh, one of the most promising. And to see you, I hadn't realized that you were the kids that were on that YouTube video playing Metallica. Yeah, I had seen that video, but I didn't realize that it was you. Well, yeah, <laughs> really long ago. I know. It was like, but ten years ago. 10 yeah. years. And we yep. looked very different. Well, yeah, you yeah, were, we were kids. really kids. Yeah. And then you went on the Ellen show. I remember that. Yes. Yeah. That must have been weird. It was her first interview ever. Oh. So that was pretty nerve wracking. And yeah. it was her what? first, like, one oh, of her oh, first performances ever. Mm. And it was on, like, international TV. And it was just very, very nerve wracking. But I mean, it set the tone for everything that came afterwards. So we felt very. Not confident, but I was like, oh, it's not going to be like more nerve wracking than the Ellen show. Yeah, for sure. So I'm just, I saw something. You tour with your parents, right? Yeah. So mom, hi mom. That's, that's, that's very important though, too, because you started young and it is a, it's a rough business and not everyone is after your better interests, I guess. Mm Mm-hmm. So do you think you're always going to tour with your parents? Well, they're a, they're a big part of our team. You know, okay. we're, they're... I mean, they don't come on tours just to be mom and dad. No, no, like I they know. have okay. actual like jobs. jobs within the team. Okay. And also, I think it's more up to them because mm-hmm. touring gets rougher and rougher. Like we've been touring nonstop for three years and next year is not going to be any different. We're going to be touring oh, for the whole wow. year. So... At one point, like, do they, like, it's super valid to feel tired. Sometimes my mom is like, I really don't want to take that flight and go to that show. And I'm like, you don't have to. You can take, like, that show off. But they're also, like, as parents, they want to be there for us. Yeah. So, honestly, I don't think we've ever talked about it. It's just, like, it'll happen when it'll happen if they want it to happen. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing, like, projects? Or have anyone ever approached you to do projects separate from the warning, like individual? No. no. Oh, my God. One thing at a time. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we're just starting as a band. Yeah. Like, we're just starting to get there. So I can't imagine having another project and, like, another touring schedule and another, like, recording schedule. I think that would be... Amazing. We would is, die. Is this your fourth album, though? It is. Yes. Keep Me Fed is her fourth yeah. album. I like that title, too. Thank you. And I like that you've got this energy that's really powerful. And I think it's important, especially because there aren't that many women in the industry. Mm-hmm. And also, it's it's super positive and it's encouraging. I mean, I'm sure you get a lot of young girls and fans saying, mm-hmm. like, we want to be like you when we grow up and stuff like that. Yeah, we do. You get that? And it's very sweet. And it's also like very impactful in a way that like we're just doing what we love yeah because we've been given the opportunity to do it like we're just sharing our music and giving the shows and whatever and if people feel inspired by that to do what they want to love not necessarily like music in general just like having the courage to follow your dreams and like work for them for us that's just like amazing I'm inspired by you guys well thank you no really it's very sweet that's why I'm here oh thanks (laughs) So thank you so much for talking to us. Is there anything that you want to say or do you, how do you like Canada or what did you eat when you got here? I didn't ask you those questions, but. Uh, <laughs> Canadian wise, um, we, we love the Canadian crowds more than anything. Like oh. the people here are just okay. great. Um, we're from Mexico, so the cold, cold. is yeah, just. It's cold here. It God, cold. It's, it's so bad. It and it's not even that bad. It's just bad and for we, us. Uh, and yes. our October weather is good for now because yeah, we can we, have snow. We toured in November, oh, the first time we toured Canada, oh. and we oh, all got the stomach flu. Oh, no. It was just so bad. No. But we toured with Three Days Grace, so it was great. Yeah. Um, mm. But yeah, Canada, like, Canadians always treat us, like, very, very nicely, and they're just an energetic crowd, so we're very happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. Thank and you. And have a good show tonight. Thank Thanks. You. And thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for having thank us. You. Okay, so my thoughts on that particular interview. That was one of the most laid-back interviews I've ever heard done by this band. And I think that partially the interviewer, partially, I don't, see the thing is, I know nothing about the Montreal scene, or really even the Canadian vibe. So I 
I don't really feel right talking about it too much, <laughs> as if there was anything, I mean, not particularly amiss, but it just felt a little sleepy, I guess I would say. And I, I mean, no offense to anybody, um, the interviewer, you know, I no offense to you at all. I, I think it's great that you're interviewing bands <laughs> and that, you know, and that you're elevating certain talents. I'm really glad you did this interview. But yeah, um, usually after an interview with, with this band, there's a certain energy level that you have. You're like, yes, you know, we're going to see something happen here with this band in the future. They've got a bright future. We can't wait. With this, it's more like, whew, all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> this one's more like, well, you know, well, if it was a group of guys, you know, then one of them might be like, you know, let me light this cigar. Yeah, so, so your trip, it was all right, huh? Yeah, got some fans? <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, uh, it was not without value, but I was, I was almost a little amused at just how sleepy it was. And um, again, I, oh, I'm just going to get in trouble saying this, but I got to be honest, right? You know, with the tour being done and with new things happening, it's, it's good that they got the exposure that they did. Being an opening band is a great way to get new fans interested. And I know that when I was watching shows back in the day with opening bands, which I used to do regularly, it's usually a chore to sit through them, and that can still be the case. But having seen the warning with Holy Wars opening, I loved Holy Wars. Well, I knew they were going to be there, but still, I was excited. But yeah, back in the day, it was like, oh, when's the, when's the headliner coming on? You know, like, I didn't choose this band. What am I doing here? You know, but if you put a good bill together and they're on there with other bands that make sense, I mean, there's no reason that they can't find themselves with a lot more fans after every gig. You know, and people are grateful that they were there to check it out. You know, because they really hit a, a very high level of, of uh, professionalism with the music and also the creativity can really feel it. One of the things I really love about this band is that you can always feel the joy coming from them in the music that they're making. Not, the, not just the performance, but even the creation of the song, you can feel kind of the joy that happened at that time that they're still carrying out at the time of playing the song. And <laughs> these particular songs that The Warning write, they're just so rock solid that you can play them over and over and over and not get sick of them. I mean, we've done so many reactions now. To, uh, some of these songs we must have heard at least 10 times. And it just doesn't matter. We still love them. Uh, and that's a sign of good construction, you know? <laughs> And they just, they did it right. They're reaping the rewards and you can feel it in the music, you know, and in the performances. And that was, that's what really makes them special to me because that's not always something you hear. In fact, you don't often hear it. It was cool to see the interview and I'm, I'm glad it got out there. You know, I'm glad that a few more Canadians have become warned <laughs> and to good effect on this tour. So um, if you're a new fan of The Warning after having seen them in Canada, I'd love to hear about that. If you've got a story about that, please leave it below. Uh, otherwise, why don't you let me know what you thought of this interview? And if you have others that you want to suggest, uh, just leave those below as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you enjoyed the presentation, please subscribe. All right. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll catch you on the next one. All right. Take care, folks.